Obtén más felicidad por menos dinero en Burlington. Ven a la tienda con toda la familia para ahorrar en estilos navideños. Puedes hacer tus compras navideñas en esa misma visita porque Burlington es tu destino único para más regalos, más marcas y más sorpresas. Encuentra una fragancia para la abuela a partir de $6.99. Grandes ofertas tecnológicas para el tío y juguetes para los niños a partir de $4.99. Burlington, ofertas que te encantan. Los estilos y selecciones varían según la tienda. Cool fact: a crocodile can't stick out its tongue. Also, you can get health insurance for a month or just under a year in some states. United Healthcare short-term insurance plans, underwritten by Golden Rule Insurance Company, offer flexible, budget-friendly coverage for you. Learn more at uh1.com. With Shipt, you get a personalized shopping experience delivered same day right to your door, so you can trade holiday memories like sitting in traffic. For way better memories, like sharing the last scoop of cookie dough, or helping decorate the house, or just enjoying a quiet moment to yourself. Sign up for a free 14-day trial of Shipt today and give your loved ones what they really want this year: more you. Shipt delight in every delivery. Previously on Sherlock and Co. There's been a murder. 19 years old, Willoughby Smith. Right, shift ends at 5 a.m. because when the rest of the force will be back. You just need to work out everything you can at that time. Watson set an alarm for 4:55 a.m. These are saviors of God. They believe that Coram is enshrined with some sort of authority from God. They practice a very strict way of life, uh, closed off from the outside world. No girls, no temptation, no society. Anyway, I made it to the crime scene, and、um, yeah, he. Stabbed in the neck in Elder Coram's bedroom. Coram is planning something: human sacrifice. As somebody with a pair of basic gardening secateurs and size six feet in this corridor, no other entry point but the back door. The back door fed by the pathway to Chatham Road. Saviour Willoughby died in your arms. I try to stop it. The blood. It, it. Nobody from the dormitories, the front lobby, or the central hallway came running. Uh, no. Elder Corum, I hope you don't mind if I jump next to your bed. Absolutely. A book, the Golden Pants. If you happen to run into any police officers before we do, inform them that the murder weapon has been returned to your desk. It, what? The letter opener there. Uh, what was that? Did he throw something out the window? He did indeed. Right, what was it? Our missing doormat. Well, look at you, you handsome devil! You made it to the final part of the Golden Pants, nay? Congratulations! <laughs>、uh, your reward: a little bit of swearing, some depictions of violence,、uh, also sexual references. Yep,、yeah, you heard that right. A wee bit of just general dread, heartbreak, sadness,、um, sex, rage, and just yeah, just the whole spectrum of.、Um, Of of shit, really. So strap in, make yourself a cup of tea, or yeah, and、uh, see you on the other side. Bugger it! What are you looking for? The footprints. They're right there. Not those ones. Well, what ones? What? I said, what ones? The ones leaving the property. What? The ones leaving the property. No, I know what you said. I just meant what, as in, like, what do you mean? Great, lovely. Well, I'm going to finish my shout-outs from earlier. <clears throat> Simon Ashby. Sorry about that. I I said your name, and then Hopkins knocked on the door, didn't he? So,、uh, Simon Ashby and his son, our youngest fan, Arlo Ashby. Uh, two years old, <laughs> so that's that's good.、Uh, shout out to Jelly. Hi, Jelly.、Uh, Raymond Quirk, another great name.、Uh, God, I'm getting rain on my phone.、Uh, I can't see.、Um, Sam Townend, John from Canada,、uh, Ash, Emery Sage, the barista. Thanks for the coffee recommendations.、Uh, Jiggly Cheesecake from a very small village in Wisconsin. <laughs> Uh, shout out here for M from south of the river, and Henri from north of the river. What I, time is it? Um, it's it's three a.m. 
One hour and 55 minutes to solve it. Yeah, all right, fair enough. Uh, all right, I guess that's enough shout-outs. So um, we should aim for an hour 40, just to be safe. OK, we'll do. We'll, we'll do what? We'll solve it. You're going to solve the whole thing in an hour and 40 minutes? Yes. All right, then. this yes it is rather nice uh, Sherlock and I are in the chapel on the grounds of Yoxley old place and there's candles everywhere it's, um, it's, it's, it's quite something it's like the, um, the final scene of Romeo and Juliet uh, hopefully less tragic though what are you doing sitting thinking Any thoughts on the golden pants, Nay? Hmm. Some. Hmm. Hmm. Pants, Nay. Those little glasses without the earpieces. Just, just sit on your nose. Like, like, um, Morpheus. Who is Morpheus? Oh, he's in the Matrix. He's in the what? The Matrix. This is a film, isn't it? It is, yeah. And is it relevant? No. Then shush. Okay. What did you mean about the footprints? The other footprints, he said. There's footprints heading into the property, but not out of it. So... the killer is... still here? The likeliest scenario? Yes. Less likely is that our killer has hidden their escape so effectively I cannot see it. But even then, they can't be a proficient killer. They can't. Uh, if you want my opinion... Mm. It looked from the pictures, and, uh, and, and definitely from the amount of blood in the room, that the killer hit the carotid artery. Yes. Which Hollywood movies would say... Any more movies, Watson? No, uh, look... Popular culture would say a wound like that is the sign of a clinical and ruthless killer. Yeah, but in my experience, it's, it's an easy shot, in fact. It, it's hard not to hit them. You know, they're a big delta of arteries on both sides of the neck, and... Go on. Well, you know, the, the more squeamish or, I don't know, reluctant the killer, the more they would try to avoid the centre, the, the, the thyroid. You know, it's, it's often depicted as some sort of blood-spurting epicenter, but it's, it's not. You know, also, it feels less personal to strike the side, which is where the arteries are. Excellent, Watson. We're on the same page. The police will be distracted by the small blade and its application, which seems so clinical and ruthless, but it's far from that. The blade was never planned to be used. How do you know? Because it belonged to Elder Cora, and it was merely a decorative letter opener. A knife is such an easy weapon to obtain. If you wanted to enter a property to stab someone to death, bringing a knife along would be the least complicated part of your plan. An assassin does not come unarmed. Do you have any suspects in mind? PCSO Hopkins is more emotional than he should be, but I'll forgive that. Elder Coram is... A weirdo. Well, yes, but also unnervingly jubilant about the death of a young man. Unnerving even for you. Wow. Then there's Saviour Tarleton. What about him? He lied, Watson. Or he hid the truth for a period of time. And why did he not mention the final words of Saviour Willoughby as remembered by Elder Corum? Do you think he's lying about the woman thing? It was she. Hopkins thinks it's a cop-out. And I would agree with Hopkins. Women aren't exactly valued here. Or in most places of worship. It would be a convenient decoy to protect your followers. But the feet. The feet? 
Size 6. The footsteps on the pathway. Saviour Tarleton said that some younger members reside on the property, but no locations would have them entering eastwards from Chatham Road. The chances of an adult male with a size 6 shoe are... Well, don't look at me, I don't bloody know. Very slim. As was the footprint. Men's shoes tend to be wider. Willoughby's final words point towards a female killer, and our footprints on the pathway point towards a female intruder. I believe him. Who? Cora. That he heard those words, it was she. You know, I, I, I don't think he has it in him to lie, first off. Especially not that close to death, and it can't be delirium, I don't think. Watson, the man is very ill. If Elder Coram was living with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, like, well, a normal person would, he'd be using a BiPAP at night. What is that? Bi-level positive airway pressure machine. You know, you, you wear a mask and the machine can help regulate your breathing at night, but he didn't have one. You know, and at this advanced stage, that's, that's quite a step to take. You think the illness is fake? No, he just wants to die. I saw no medication around him, so I, I think we're dealing with a faith-based approach to his condition. If he's got no meds, the chances of delirious hallucinations and hearing some phantom words and stuff, it's, uh, it's unlikely. Very good, Watson. Sad, though. Really. Is it? Well, yeah. I mean, look, he can do whatever he wants, but everyone deserves people to miss them when they're dead. And my mum told me that I had some old schoolmates gutted because they thought I was dead, and it made me feel quite good, to be honest. You know, like, like a little peek into... I don't know. Faith, by its nature, Watson, is irrational. No, I don't... I don't think so. Then you're wrong. <laughs> People just want each other. You know, they just want community. That's it. That's, that's all it is. Yeah, it can be, uh, can be a football team, a religion, a conspiracy theory, a job, you know, anything. It's the people they're in it for, ultimately. You know, if they can keep the us versus them under control and let other people be, then... Yeah, they just, they just want to be with people. You know, and if they need a special something that binds them all together, then that's okay. Unless it's Bristol Rovers. Was that a Swindon Town joke? <laughs> yes! Yes! Well done, mate! <laughs> well done? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't think you'd get it. <laughs> hmm. The final thing? The Golden Pants Nay. Go on. It was all in French. I gave Elder Corum a relatively well-known French phrase, and he didn't know what I was talking about. Hmm. The Golden Pants Nay. Ah, here it is. Here what is? Found it here, audiobook. English version. Listen to it. I'll be back in an hour. Sherlock, we don't have much time. I must be sure, Watson. Be sure of what? That the killer is still here. I... Bloody hell. Oops. Uh, ah. The Golden Pants Nay. Download audiobook. The Golden Pants Nay by Julien Boisson. English language version. Oh, get on with it. Chapter 1. Awake. The winter solitude was approaching. Adrienne felt the nights closing around her. Each evening the dark embrace became sooner than the last. The gas lamps barely reached the Canal Saint Martin as she weaved through the crowds. The 10th arrondissement had been the home of her father's family even through the revolutions. But Paris was changing. 1904 felt a hundred lifetimes since Napoleon III. To Adrienne, these were the stories of history she had learned from school as a young girl. Now, she was a young girl. Paris was the place. Candlelight as the flames ducked and weaved around their wigs. He approached. 
He removed his golden pince-nez from the bridge of his nose and placed them on her night table. He came closer. Each step, another item was removed. The glasses, the shoes, Watson. the jacket, a kaleidoscope. Oh. <clears throat> ah. Hey, hey, um, Sherlock. How's, how's the, um, did you find I've the... eliminated the possibilities. Um. The killer must be here. The dormitories witnessed nothing, heard nothing. In fact, they were not disturbed until now. Sherlock, it's 4.15 in the morning. Did you wake them up? I did indeed. And, right, what happened? A bunch of clueless, innocent boys, each one of them more indoctrinated than the last. You told them about Willoughby, didn't you? Mm-hmm. How did you break the news? I just said, Saviour Willoughby has been violently murdered, this is a crime scene, come forward if you know anything. Right, okay. In future, how about I break the news regarding brutal murders to friends and families of the deceased, okay? Absolutely, Watson. No problem at all. Tell me of the golden pants name. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, mate. It's, um, so it's, uh, it's about this girl, Adrienne. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she lives in France in, in, like, the early 1900s. In Paris, I think. And, and you know, it's, it's, really, it's really an interesting portrayal of life. And you fell asleep, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. But look, I'm pulling an all-nighter here. You know, and you've asked me to listen to some French literature for God's sake, for goodness sake. You may as well have slipped me a bloody valley. Watson, the golden pants nay is central to the entire case. I know, I'm sorry, but I... Adrienne's underwear slipped below her trembling knees as Matteo's bite clenched softly on her nipples. Oh dear. She Watson, this is not the time and certainly not the place. You told me to listen to it. I asked you to listen to the golden pants Matteo groaned as his erection was freed from the linen chamber of his drawers. Oh, stop Jesus, it, Watson, make Jesus. it bloody stop You're trying. His testicles pulsated with desire. Hi, uh, hi, hi there. <clears throat> Who are these lot? The younger saviors from the dormitories. What are they doing here? They have come to the chapel to recognize his passing. Sherlock, we don't have much time. Yes, I'm nearly there. Well, nearly there is just going to have to be enough, isn't it? Patience, Watson. It's not about patience. It's about being arrested when the actual police arrive. So I think the panic is warranted. Shh, shh. Panic. Panic? Panic, Watson. What are you talking about? Where are you going? To Elder Corum. And then what? And then home. Sherlock! Safe, our 24 7 lifeguard protection helps stop crime in real time because during a break in, every second counts, and these days, every dollar counts. Right now, get 50% off any new system with Fast Protect Monitoring at simplysafecom Spotify. It's U.S. News and World Report's best home security of 2023. Advanced home security, 24 7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day. There's no safe like Simply Safe. With Shipt, you get a personalized shopping experience delivered same day right to your door. So you can trade holiday memories like sitting in traffic for way better memories, like sharing the last scoop of cookie dough. 
or helping decorate the house, or just enjoying a quiet moment to yourself. Sign up for a free 14-day trial of SHIP today and give your loved ones what they really want this year. More you. Shipped. Delight in every delivery. Through the Subaru Share the Love event, Subaru and its retailers help charities like Meals on Wheels. When my mother got sick, Meals on Wheels provided the food and support she needed. I really appreciate that Subaru gives back to causes that are important to owners like me. Thanks to Subaru and its retailers, more than 4.3 million meals have been provided to seniors like my mom. Learn more at Subaru.com slash share. Slow down. No, you hurry up. It's getting light. Police are going to be here any bloody minute. Hence the reason to hurry up. In here. Mr. Holmes, Elder Coram is sleeping. Yes, and I would like to do the same shortly. Excuse me, thank hey, you. No, no! <clears throat> Excuse me. You can't go in there. <coughs> Hello again, Elder Coram. What? What time is it? Watson? Hmm? What time is it? Uh, 4.38. Excellent. Just enough time. Saviour Tarleton, could you join us? Thank you ever so. What's going on? Elder Quorum, whilst I realise that you frame death in slightly different terms to myself and society generally, you'll be relieved to learn that Saviour Willoughby saved your life. He did? An intruder who entered the property from the eastern wing pathway that heads out to Chatham Road had planned to smother you in your sleep. With that pillow there. <gasps> this pillow? My pillow? That's correct. But they had a knife. A far from ideal murder weapon if your target is an elderly dying man, don't you think? A man in your condition expiring in the night would be met with celebration both within and outside these walls. Suffocation would have prompted no police investigation, no suspicion of any murder, just nature, or God or whatever, taking its course. The knife, your letter opener, was used hastily as self-defence due to an attack on the intruder from Saviour Willoughby. The intruder broke open that back door, probably under a rolling thunder, entered this room and approached your bed. Only then was she stopped by Willoughby, who lodges just above here. She? Yes, she. Uh, Mr. Holmes. Ah, PCSO Hopkins, excellent timing. The details, please. It's, um, it... The car belongs to Mrs. Anna Tarleton. Tarleton? Mrs. Anna Tarleton, owner of a light blue Volkswagen Polo, currently parked on Chatham Road. That's enough. No, it's not enough, actually. It gets better. Saviour Tarleton heard the scream of Saviour Willoughby and entered this room to see his own mother holding the body of his fatally wounded friend. She entered via the eastern pathway and removed her muddy shoes on the doormat that this young man has since discarded. Stop it, please. I Anna Tarleton, I like many parents, friends and family members of the Saviours housed within Yoxley Old Place, had wished you dead for some time, Elder Corrin. She and many residents of Holton Green had wanted the spell you hold over their loved ones to be finally broken. Upon knowing of your illness, she has been waiting for your demise and you have lingered on in life and your influence has reached deeper into the community. Then a rumour. An unstoppable toxic seep of dark gossip surfaced in Holton Green. Human sacrifice. The sacrificing of saviours to serve the forces of heaven. The mother, fearing for her son, finally acted and it was young Willoughby that stopped her. The pillow was tossed to the ground. They fought and wrestled silently until Anna Tarleton located a blade and plunged it into the carotid artery of Saviour Willoughby. Then... Then he screamed. It was not his scream. It was Anna's. As my companion pointed out to me, the attack was clumsy, most likely meant to defend herself and at most wound and panic Saviour Willoughby into submission so she could escape. 
Hitting that artery would have caused very sudden blood loss. Fatal for Willoughby, but very traumatic for Mrs. Tarleton if she intended just the flesh wound. Have the police found her? No. But I have. I thought you were the police. No. Just impersonating them. Oh. So you found her? Yes. You have? Mm Mm-hmm. Le Pansne Dore, Elder Coram. Have you read it? The what? Yes, exactly. Earlier, I uttered a French expression your way. You seem confused, so you don't speak the language. So why on earth, on this bookshelf, stacked with profound theology and heavenly wonderments, would a French novel be there? And why, given the foundational principles of your religious experiment here, would it contain passages such as this? Doctor? His testicles pulsated with desire. No! He sat within her Please, car. just... You cannot, please. No! No! His penis soon entered. But why, Elder Corum, was this erotic French novel on the floor? I I don't know. I I would never have read this material. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, please. I have been deceived. No, Elder Corum. I was deceived by Saviour Tarleton here. So I will ask you again, Saviour Tarleton, as I asked you at a quarter past midnight this evening. Is this a chimney cavity? No. But you told me that it was your belief that this was a chimney cavity. Was that a belief or was it a lie? It was a lie. So what is it, Saviour Tarleton? And why... Does this bookshelf adorned wall seem to block sound, including the scream of your own mother? Because it, it, it's a panic room. A panic room. The golden pince is a dummy, fitted by an impudent local contractor to conceal a handle. Nothing more. As the hatred towards Elder Corum and the saviours of God grew, the need for such a facility became increasingly necessary. Panic rooms, by their nature, are very well hidden. What you will struggle to hide, however, is high-density reinforced concrete atop Edwardian foundations which have no brick footings. Not to worry. You distribute the weight across the room to prevent localised subsidence. Hence why there is concrete under these floorboards. See? No squeak. And no concrete under the floorboards at your end, Elder Corum. See? Rather squeaky now, aren't they? I just... You wanted your mum to be safe. Yeah. Look, if she knows what she did to Willoughby... She does not know, Saviour Tarleton. She is behind thick steel-lined concrete with state-of-the-art soundproofing, hence why not a single soul the other side of this wall heard her scream. Doctor, you'll see where this book was removed from. There's a small brass handle that resembles a wall bracket. Yeah, I see it. Pull it for me. Please. Please don't do this. <laughs> Elder Coram, Mrs. Anna Tarleton. Mrs. Anna Tarleton. No! Elder Coram. No, please! Is he alive? Is the boy alive? He is not, Mrs. Tarleton, thanks to you. No! Sherlock. No! <laughs> Mum? Mum, mum, it's going to be okay. It's okay. And that, Elder Coram, is how one should respond to a young man's premature death. Good night. Give the Heavenly Father my best when you see him. Four fifty-five a.m. We uh, <clears throat> we better head off.
okay, Stanley? PCSO Hopkins. Are you alright, mate? Hmm? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just, uh... Not the suspect you were hoping for. That's right, yeah. Same. Feel free to have a nap, Dr. Watson. No, I, um... Mind is kind of racing right now. Of course. Yeah. Sherlock, on the other hand, don't think I've known him to sleep so peacefully. He's brilliant, isn't he? Yeah. He's all right. Hello, you been out on the town, love? Uh, not really. Just working. Hey, Archie, good boy. Working for the army? Oh, I'm not in the army, Mum. Good night, Watson. Good work. Night, mate. Well done. Night, Mrs. Watson. Good night, love. I might, um... I might take a quick sleep myself, Mum, if, if that's all right. Oh, yeah, don't worry about me, my darling. I can make myself busy. <sighs> I won't be long. Just, um... I haven't slept and, uh, yeah, need a, need a power nap or something, so. Uh, then I'll, I'll take you and Archie round Regent's Park if you fancy. Go on, you go, go sleep for goodness sake. Hi. Hey. I, I heard you come back. Morning, Carol. Hello, lovely. Do you want a cup of tea? Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry, I'm fine. Um, are you fine, John? Yeah, we're, we're okay. Just tired. Soft? Solved, yep. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about it yeah, later. Yeah, sounds good. Oh, I sent you an email. It's just a DocuSign oh, thing. Oh, right. Uh, let me... No, no. You go to sleep. You can look at it later. No, it's okay. It'll just take two seconds. The sex was everything Adrienne had wished it uh. was. They orgasmed together. Oh, God. Amidst the panting and groans of passionate lovemaking. Turn off. T turn off. I'm gonna... Yes, yep, yep, yep. What book is that? No. Nope. Hey, everybody. Whew. What do you think of that editing? <laughs> yeah, oh, I faded the sound of the uh, the thing, the 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 choir. I faded the sound of the choir into the. Yeah, I mean, come on, that was good. Right, that was that was good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the golden pants, nay? Sorry about all the, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the sexual stuff. Uh, that was unplanned, and I totally appreciate that that might put some people off. But hey, we're back in my bedroom, so certainly no chance of any sexual references now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, pl uh, please, um, please get in touch. I've loved reading your messages and questions, as has Sherlock. That's a lie. That That's a lie. He's not interested at all. But, you know, I like it. So, yeah, give the show five stars when you can. Follow me on Twitter at DocJWatsonMD, all one word, uh, DocJWatsonMD. And, yeah, take care, and I'll see you next week. Shit, God. Bloody hell, were you in here this whole time? Yes. Do you need these shoelaces? Oh, what?